Hello again. Here's uh, another update since I've put it together. Figured I'd give you a look. Tell you where I'm at so far and maybe discuss some more stuff I didn't tell you about inside there. Um, I pressed everything back together <coughs> using you know, old sockets and stuff. Put them over the shafts, push against things, and then uh, and then once here's a little shop press. That's that little thing that I've used to press most everything my whole life. My dad built that when I was a child. Still going strong. Excellent design. Okay. What do I want to show you today? Hall sensors. They didn't really react as I suspected. I have fed I have fed uh, five volts to them through this little adapter. Um, DC 5 volt adapter so it's hooked to brown is my negative line orange is my positive and inside the motor they will uh, split off one to each of the three hall sensors uh, I tested how I chose which lead the hall sensors to pick uh, first I found my main negative lead so that was the negative lead in the controller so I had continuity between this and one of the leads on each of the hall sensors in there so I figured that's my negative then uh, of the other two choices one of them had some basic continuity between each of the hall sensors and the third line did not so I assume the third line is my signal line seen as they're they weren't really tied together the ground should have been that one as the continuity suggested and uh, powers the odd man out so that's how I've wired it now it doesn't do quite what I suspected I've got I've got my power going to those two I got my multimeter let's see I'm put it on the that's not the setting I was gonna use but that's what we're gonna try so multimeters on there I've got one of my hall sensor wires my blue one it feeds in that one there feeds into there okay so then don't worry I didn't put the vice grips on the threads they're just on the very tip of the machine bolt there uh, when I first assembled it I thought I thought maybe I assembled something wrong because I couldn't turn it by hand and then I put the vice grips on and oh it's good it's it has a lot of torque I think that's I think this might be torquey should be fun so I'm gonna turn it with the vice grips like this one notch one cog so there's like a cog in the magnets and then one cog back that's what I'm gonna do and here's my multimeter so right now we're reading 001, 002, I go one cog oh. that's terrible maybe I don't have a good connection that's not a good sign is it oh there we go so we got voltage and then the next cog nothing so I can go back and forth so now I I checked all three leads that one my green one and my light blue and uh, they all do that same thing so they're doing some sort of signal on and off hopefully that's enough to make this controller happy we'll see like I say I'll go sensorless if we need so inside here I've split yeah my positive and my negative for my hall sensors into each one and then I have a sing signal for each one out so that's five little wires and then there's the three big ones one for each phase so for them I did the same as what they had done here I grabbed all the white ones and just soldered them together all the red ones all the black ones soldered them together and fed a nice 14 gauge lead out which would just barely fit let's see I'll show you out so you can see uh, kind of little wires one of those colors aren't good that one's a little better so you can see the black wire and there's a blue wire beside it and it, it did squeeze it fit under the bearing it stayed in place I greased it so it would go on easy there you can see the, the positive and negative lead for the hall sensors and the green phase wire and they slip right underneath that bearing I can't believe that worked out I'm kind of embarrassed to admit but uh, this is 
this is Cat5 cable or telephone cable or something. It was the thinnest wire I could find. Uh, yeah, it's solid core. Well, <laughs> there was solid core wiring in here. I guess that's what's wound around the coils, but we'll see how that lasts. We'll go essentialist if we need. So then the next test, that test on ebikes.ca, that's where I learned that. You can you can test stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they got a really good troubleshooting guide, like four pages. It's really simple. You learn all this with four pages of PDFs. Okay, the next test, I'll see if I can pull off here. We'll unplug this so that the one hand is scary. There you go. Okay, multimeter. The next test is if we test for resistance. Let's see. I'm never going to be able to do this one handed, ever. So you can see when you touch the <laughs> chopsticks touch the leads together open them up okay so then maybe I'll just I'll twist twist this quick and then show you I'll twist this one on here and this one on this motor lead and they're kind of dangling there. Let's see. They're not touching. So now we've got point 0.4. So they're all the same. I checked them all, and they all measure the same. So I think that's what's important. It's not a matter of it's not a matter of what the number is. It's a matter of uh, that they're the same. So that's good. My hall sensors appear to be working. I'm kind of suspicious because they're. They put out fractions of a volt instead of a... I expect they didn't put out 5 volts, but probably something I don't understand still. I'm not... might have to go back in there. Who knows? See if I go back in there. And yeah, it seemed to rotate good. I got my signals, so I'm probably going to start assembling this. Hook the controller up and battery next, I guess. So that's it. Bion X is back together. Seems to be rotating. My wires fed out. We'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Oh. What's that? Huh? Yeah? What have you been doing? I know you've been up to no good. Yeah, exactly. No good. Alright. Thanks for watching. We'll make this bike run yet. Catch you next time.